Yeah. Okay. So the next talk, the remainder of the talks today uh, are uh, connecting, uh, connected to SDP and tensegrity, uh, uh, SDP and rigidity and tensegrity. Uh, the universal rigidity is a sort of a connecting uh, concept uh, between uh, semi-definite programming and um, and rigidity. So the remaining two talks will be on rigidity. The afternoon talk, not sure if it connects to universal rigidity, but um, this one certainly does. Okay, Ryoshun is a um, is from uh, is from the group of Shinichi Tanigawa, um, and yeah, all yours, Ryoshun. Thank you for your introduction. So, um, I'm going to talk about universal rigidity of generic symmetric tensegrities. Uh, this is a joint work with my advisor, Shinji Tanigawa. Let me start from the background or background graph embedding problem. Uh, in this problem, you're given a graph G and uh, real number Lij for or for each ij in E, your task is to find the uh, d-dimensional point configuration P such that the uh, um, point at uh, the distance between Pi and Pj is equal to Lij. And um, you can also formulate it, this in terms of Euclidean distance metrics. So this problem is also known as low rank Euclidean distance matrix completion. This problem appears in various applications. For example, molecule conformation, tensegrity construction, and the sensor network localization. Uh, especially when you think of, about the sensor network localization, um, in addition to the interpoint distance, you are given a position of the subset of the vertices, which is called anchors. Okay. Unfortunately, graph embedding problem is known to be NP hard. So one of the main analysis too is to use SDP relaxation. So, and so I start, so, I'll do this. Let V to be, let the number of vertices to be N. And we assume that the, it is labeled from the natural number from one to N. And for D dimensional configuration P, we write capital P to be the D times N matrix whose I squared is PI. We define a matrix called gram matrix by P transpose P. In other words, IJ entry of gram matrix is the inner product between PI and PJ. When you consider gram matrix, uh, also a transformation cancels out. Okay. So by using this gram matrix, um, I reformulate the graph embedding problem. I always write SN plus to be the n times n PSD matrix, and inner product is written, trace inner product is written like this form. So I should use laser pointer. <laughs> then the problem is like this. So given the graph and LIJ, your task is to find a PSD matrix X satisfying the linear constraint plus rank constraint. Here, FIJ is defined to be EI minus EJ times EI minus EJ transpose. Then gram matrix of P is feasible if and only if P is a solution to the original graph emitting problem. But still, because of the rank constraint, this problem is non-convex. So what I do is to relax this condition. 
uh, when when the rank constraint is deleted, uh, it is convex, so it is solvable within a given precision. But the solution can be in very high rank. So in time, um, the solution to the original graph embedding problem is in high dimension, which is not a good thing. So there are two natural questions. So there are two natural like, ideas. So decide if every feasible solution of this relaxed SDP has rank at most D. This leads to the notion called the dimensional rigidity. And another question is that, another thing is that uh, to decide if the SDP has a unique solution. This corresponds to the notion called the universal rigidity and the unique localizability. Um, there's a um, slight difference between these notions. So localizability refers to the property of the system, while rigidity refers to the property of the underlying version framework, or tensegrity. And I focus on the version framework setting. So I start from the basic terminologies from rigidity. A d-dimensional tensegrity is a tuple g, sigma, and p, where g is a graph and sigma is a map called the sine map, uh, which is a map from edge set to sines. And p is a d, p is a map from vertices to d space, and it is called a point configuration. Okay. Um, here is an example. So actually the sign, the, uh, the, the edge labeled minus is called the strut and the edge labeled zero is called the bar and the plus is called cable. So this is a four vertex, four vertex tensegrity. And I mean, it is two dimension. And uh, it, like in this case, when every member is a stiff bar, it is called a bar joint framework. Throughout, we assume that the number of vertex is at the most, uh, is uh, bigger than the dimension it lives and the point configuration is affine field. That is no D plus one points lie on hyperplane. We define the two relations between tensegrities. The first one is dominance. Um, so let G sigma P and G sigma Q be uh, D dimensional tensegrities. We say that G sigma P dominates G sigma Q if these conditions hold. So it means that the strut cannot be shorter and the length of bars are fixed and cables cannot be longer. So it represents a physical constraint given by like strut bar cables. So for example, this left uh, tensegrity dominates the right one. Okay. And the second relation is congruence. For two D-dimensional point configuration P and Q, we say that P is equivalent to, P is congruent to Q if every point wise distance are the same. Um, real, real, irrespective of uh, the existence of edge. In other words, there is a um, Euclidean motion which maps uh, P to Q, okay. Mm. Let me define the notion global rigidity. A D dimensional tensegrity is called globally rigid if for any D dimensional point configuration Q, 
uh, which is dominated by J sigma P, implies that uh, Q is a congruent image of P. For example, um, as I showed that uh, this tensegrity dominates um, another tensegrity, and th that is not a congruent image of the initial one. So this is not globally rigid. And this version framework is also not globally rigid because you can flip um, the upper vertex down to here, while the right two, right two tensegrities and frameworks are globally rigid. So what I do is to formulate global rigidity in terms of um, rank constraint SDP, and we use the same line by gram matrix. So, okay, here is a feasibility problem. Find the tensegrity G sigma P, a given the tensegrity G sigma P, find a positive semi definite matrix X such that uh, satisfying uh, three condition, being three condition plus one condition uh, where JN is just a, also an uh, old one matrix plus rank constraint. Okay. And the inner product between rank matrix is just uh, for bit it's just to for bit trivial translation. So when X is the gram matrix of some P, uh, some Q, then it says that the center of or center of gravity of Q is at the origin. So for simplicity, we assume that uh, we always assume that the center of gravity of uh, a point configuration is at the origin. Then um, the gram matrix of P is always feasible in this problem. Here is a claim. Um, G sigma P is globally digit if and only if the above problem about G sigma P has a unique feasible solution. Um, I think this is just a repeat, but uh, um, I believe this. So suppose X is a, suppose a feasible solution X is a, a gram matrix of point configuration Q. Um, it, this is nothing but uh, G sigma P dominates G sigma Q and the center of gravity as the origin. So, so the uniqueness is equivalent to the global rigidity. So my plan is to um, delete the rank condition. Then I get I get this. So this is a very important definition. I say that the uh, tensegrity G sigma P is universally rigid if and only if the this SDP, the, this relaxed SDP for G sigma P has a unique feasible solution, namely gram matrix of P. Um, geometrically, uh, it, it corresponds to the global rigidity any higher dimension. So what I mean here is that, uh, so, 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 so consider this framework. This is uh, known to be globally rigid in two space, but uh, when you lift it in R, um, three space, then, then, they, then there is a non-trivial flex in R3. So this is not universal rigid. But somewhat surprising is uh, this guy is universal rigid. So as a consequence, Universal rigidity is not a generic property of a graph. Right. Yeah. And this is also universal rigidity. Okay. 
And there is a very nice geometric view about universal rigidity. So for that, um, consider just a version framework. So, so no strut and no cables. Let Ln plus be the set of Sn plus set of PSD matrices, which is also going to do all run matrix. Where so so here L denotes the Laplacian. And let pi be also going to projection from span of Fij for all i and j to span of Fij where ij is in E. Then here is a grain. P is universally rigid if and only if this condition holds. So, so what, what this means is that uh, take the ground matrix of P and project it down and take its inverse image. And so then the intersection of that and the, the Laplacian cone is just a single term. This is the meaning of the right hand side. Why, why this is true? Uh, because uh, for the bijoint framework case, dominance is just uh, uh, just saying this. So every edge length are the same. And so in terms of gram matrix, this is equivalent, equivalent to say that uh, the difference of the Gram matrix is also going to the Fij for all ij and e. So it says that the, the image of these two are the same under, under pi. So the sing singletonness is equivalent to the universal rigidity. So our question is that uh, which tensor gauges are universally rigid? Okay, so start from uh, our review. So this is the, that's the same SDP, but I slightly change change it. Uh, I just set a, a arbitrary objective function. Then I can take the dual program problem, it looks like this. So what the constraint means. So these two constraints is just uh, first two conditions says that cables uh, strut uh, give a sign constraint. And the third, third one says that the uh, weighted Laplacian matrix is positive same definite. So for example, um, dual variable is a uh, edge weight and uh, yeah, strut and cables and uh, the PSD-ness of Laplacian. Okay. Let me move on to the notion called equilibrium stress. stress. So consider this, this equation star. We say that the uh, Omega is an equilibrium stress of G sigma P if it satisfies asterisk and the sign constraint. So what this condition mean is that uh, consider any vertex and consider the edge vectors towards the neighbors and then the weighted average of these vectors are zero. So, so physically, it is best to um, understand it as a young modulus. And then the dual objective function is uh, the energy function. And uh, it can, the objective function can be written as just a, Inner product of uh, gram matrix and uh, Lapla and weighted Laplacian matrix, so it is always non-negative. When omega is identically zero, um, 
the optimum value of zero is always attained, attained. So omega is optimal, then P times LG omega is zero. Then and actually this linear constraint is nothing but this asterisk condition. So what it means is that uh, any optimal solution of the dual program problem is an equilibrium stress of G sigma B. Okay. We also say that the uh, edge weight is strictly proper if it is negative on strut and positive on cable. So this is just a easy observation. So for for any equilibrium stress omega, the rank of the weighted Laplacian matrix is bounded above by n minus d minus one. Why this is true? Um, we already saw that the p times lg omega is zero, and uh, since lg omega is a Laplacian. All one, all one vector is always in its kernel, so it satisfies this condition. And since we assume a fine fullness, uh, the left matrix is low for rank, hence this upper bounds holds. Here is an important definition. We say that the tensegrity G sigma P is super stable if it satisfies two conditions. First condition is called ES, where, which stands for equilibrium stress. Uh, it says that there exists a strictly proper equilibrium stress, such that its Laplacian is positive semi-definite, and its rank is maximum, which is n minus d minus one. The second condition is called conic, or conic condition. Uh, it says that there is no non-zero symmetric matrix S satisfying this condition. The important thing is that uh, sorry, what? Oh, okay. Important thing is that. Uh, Actually, superstability is sufficient for universal rigidity. This is first pointed out by Connery. And uh, yes, um, for dimensional rigidity, ES is sufficient. Uh, okay, so 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 let me interpret that superstability in the language of uh, SDP. So equilibrium stress condition about the, the condition about the equilibrium stress is equivalent to say that the dual optimal solution, LG omega, there exists a dual optimal solution where the pair of the ground matrix of P and LG omega is a strict complementary pair of the SDP. This is a interpretation of the first condition. For the second condition, um, it is best uh, described in this way, I think. So it implies that there is no orthogonal no, no matrix A satisfying this condition. So it means that there is no affine flex. Okay. And I also give a geometric view of super stability. So again, consider a bar joint framework with no uh, inequality constraint. Since uh, uh, recall that the set of PSD Laplacians are, are the, just the uh, face of the PSD matrix. So it is uh, uh, isomorphic to the smaller PSD cone. So we know the face structure of it. And concre concretely, it can be right like this. Here is our claim. ES is equivalent to 
the existence of hyperbrain, which is parallel to pi, and exposing the minimal phase of the ground matrix. Secondly, um, the conic condition is equivalent to the disk condition. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is just saying that uh, it is universally rigid inside the face. Okay. And uh, actually this, when you combine these, this, this, these two claims, uh, it is easy to see that the uh, ES plus conic implies universal, rigid, universal rigidity because uh, uh, suppose, uh, yeah, and when you project it down and uh, take its inverse image, it is still uh, inside the, the hyperplane. So, so the only the possible candidate is inside the face and the conic condition implies that it is unique inside the face. Okay. And to, 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 to see this claim, uh, I just, I only explain for the case of, for the first case, for the first claim. Uh, suppose, uh, suppose some hyperplane is parallel to pi, uh, it is equivalent to say that the normal vector is in the span of the Fij for Ij in D. And, uh, the exposedness condition can be written uh, concurrently like this. And this follows actually from uh, this exact description of the phase. Okay. This is uh, the figures. So uh, most of the universal rigid tensegrities are super st stable. But there, there is no some some examples, which is universally rigid but is not super stable. So the question is uh, when it is necessary. And I introduce uh, I I talk about previous work. Uh, I define notion called genericity. So. Let K be a field. We assume that the K is a subfield of real numbers and it is a finite extension field of the rationals. We say that the point configuration, D dimensional point configuration P is generic over K if the coordinates of P1 through Pn are algebraically independent over field K. When, when a field K is the rationals, we simply say P is generic. And uh, one, one, one reason that we, we may pay attention to genericity is that the set of non-generic points has a Lubeck measure zero. So, so, so yeah, um, with, with some exception, uh, we can say something that that's uh, the reason why we assume genericity. So, so, so since this one has a like a reflectional symmetry, uh, this is not generic. This is an example. Okay. So, so here is a go to the necessity condition. Um, it says that if a generic bar joint framework is universally rigid, then it is super stable. In figures, it's so they say that for this part, actually super stability and universal rigidity coincide. Okay. So I move on to my our main results. First result. Um, is about uh, generic tensegrities. So we we make uh, so so cables or struts are out. Our theorem is that if a generic tensegrity is universally rigid, then it is super stable. 
which means that uh, in this range, super stability and universal rigidity also coexist. Our second theorem is about the outside of generosity around here. So to state our second theorem, I introduce some notion. So let gamma be a finite group. Let theta be a group homomorphism from gamma to orthogonal group of RD. We say that the 10 security G sigma P is theta symmetric if gamma acts freely on the side graph G sigma. And uh, the action of uh, gamma is compatible with that of theta. Um, in other words, uh, it satisfies this condition. Actually, symmetric tensegrity appears uh, in engineering. Uh, if, for example, it appears in engineering. And uh, actually, there is some real examples constructed. We introduce a weaker condition, weaker generosity condition. So gamma and theta are the same. We define Q theta to be a finite extension field of Q generated by the entries of theta gamma for all gamma. Since we assume that uh, gamma is a finite group, um, this is finite extension field. We say that the theta symmetric tensegrity is a generic modular symmetry if the coordinate of representative vertices are algebraically independent over Q theta. So instead of uh, assuming the generality of all, all the points, we can pick pick up uh, representatives from uh, each um, vertex orbit and uh, we assume the generality of them. Okay. Then here is a second theorem. Let G sigma P be a theta symmetric tensegrity for some theta. And we assume some condition for the conic. Uh, suppose uh, for for all vertex, um, for what all vertex i, i and uh, its neighbors together spans uh, uh, spans the whole R D space. If G sigma p is a generic modular symmetry and uh, universal rigid, then it is super stable. So again. Um, in figures, uh, it refers to this range. This is because when gamma is a trivial group, uh, generic modular symmetry just is just a genericity. So, so, so our theorem says that uh, this is a real picture. Okay. Is there any question so far? If not, I ah oh, uh, I should say about uh, some related works, further related works. So, um, uh, universal rigidity is actually there is no um, there is no equivalent condition to the universal rigidity which is uh, the existence of a sequence of stresses. And it is stronger than super stability. And it can be best interpreted as a facial reduction step. Okay. And their, their result and ours do not collapse because uh, our result says that uh, in some, under some generosity, just one hyperplane is uh, sufficient is uh, net is uh, which just why just one hyperplane suffice um yeah and there are some results 
recent results, which says that the, every generic global digit graph can be realized as a generically universal digit framework. And uh, there's also a very deep result about uh, global, digit, global digit itself. It says that uh, a generic framework is a global digit if and only if there exists a equilibrium stress omega such that uh, the Laplacian matrix is max rank. In our language, uh, it is ES2 without PSD condition. So, so I move on to proofs. And this is not a very deep one, though. Um, I just remarked that uh, the conic condition follows from, uh, so, okay, yeah. What we want to do is uh, to check super stability, but uh, for conic condition, um, it follows from uh, the previous result. So I only check uh, ES condition about, which is about equilibrium stress. Okay, so here is a very important idea and a very good, I very nice idea by Golder and Thurston. So we, so we have a red point, which is a universal rigid point, and what we want is a hyperplane, which is a parallel to pi, and exposing the minimal face of the red one, so this orange one. To get this hyper plane, we take uh, the projected, we consider the projected image of Laplacian cone and take uh, the exposing, supporting hyper plane of this red point, and we, we put it back to the whole space. This is the idea, but uh, uh, yeah, there is a, of course there is a problem. Uh, the coordinate shadow may not be exposed. So we may not get this appropriate hyperplane age. So to couple with this, Gotor and Thurston introduced a very nice lemma. So, and we use that, as a black box, so I may I talk about it. So let K be a similar algebraic set over field K, and uh, X is a X is called a generic point in K. If for any K coefficient polynomial f, f x equals zero implies f is identically zero on S. And we say that uh, X is a locally generic point. If X is a generic point in K intersected with uh, some neighborhood. So here's the example. When K is a uh, X, the algebraic set defined by X times Y equals zero, then this point on the X axis is not generic point because um, uh, this is not a generic point, but if we take some neighborhood, then it is generic inside this border intersected with K. So this may be a local generic point. Here is a theorem by a lemma by Gotter and Thurston, uh, which is a, a little bit long, but I go step by step. Let K be a closed convex line-free semi-algebraic set over K. Line-free means it contains no full line. So like this. And let pi be a projection where, uh, let pi be a projection, yeah. And let X be a point in K satisfying this condition, namely universal digit condition. Under this condition, if some condition star is satisfied, then we can take, and then there is hyperplane H in the lower 
lower, dim lower dimension, such that uh, if we pull it up, uh, it exposes face of X. So this is what we want, right? And the condition we have to check is uh, this. Um, X is a locally generic point in M extreme points of K for some M. So where uh, here M extreme points is, uh, is a set that uh, the, which is included in the M dimensional phase of K. So in this example, uh, what we should do is to um, local generality with, uh, within these uh, smaller, dim smaller dimensional faces. Okay. Is, uh, is this lemma clear? So what we, what we do is to uh, translate uh, this, translate the problem to satisfy this and to check star. Okay, so for tensegrities, in order to, to use that uh, for, in order to use that lemma, uh, we introduce slack variables. So first, so here is a, so these are the slack variables and uh, we consider the projection from uh, this bigger space to this space. And our cone becomes uh, the becomes this guy. Then uh, the then the for ten for even for ten segregates, the universal rigidity can be uh, can be in, interpreted in in this like uh, this project it down and take its inverse image intersected with the cone is a singleton type um, statement. Okay, yeah. So what we need to do is check a star. And uh, in this case, when the original P is generic, then P, then gram matrix of P plus zero, comma zero is uh, locally generic in D plus one choose two extreme points of uh, the cone. This is, uh, okay, I'll give a brief. So since we know the facial structure of K plus, uh, we can explicitly write down D plus one choose two extreme points which is like this. And uh, since P, the gram matrix of P has a rank D and uh, the rank is uh, lower semi-continuous, there exists a neighborhood of uh, gram matrix of P such that inside a neighborhood, the rank of matrix is always at least D and uh, so we we consider the uh, sorry. So th this is not right. When we consider d plus one choose two extreme points intersected with uh, with this neighborhood, then then it like uh, like this. So and uh, the the generality of the original p implies that. Uh, in this in this range in in, in this set uh, p transpose p zero is generic so altogether it is locally generic in d plus one choose two extreme points okay after that is uh, very easy so by combining the claim and the lemma there exists a hyperplane parallel to pi dash uh, which is exposing ex exposing the face of p transpose p comes zero, and uh, when we take the normal vector of that hyperplane, then uh, actually 
some strict properness follows from uh, this exposingness condition and uh, also rank condition and PSD control follows. So that's a desired certificate. This is a proof of the theorem one. For the theorem two, uh, the problem is becoming more complicated. So, so what, what we start is where we start is a generic module symmetry point configuration P. And uh, then because of some symmetry, uh, it is not it is not even locally generic in M extreme points of uh, the Laplacian PSD Laplacian cone. So we, what we should do is to restrict ourselves to symmetric matrices, the set of symmetric matrices, uh, where I mean symmetric matrices is this. So um, it is a set of Laplacians, which, such, which is invariant under some permutation, where this permutation is given by the action of gamma to the vertex set. And uh, our cone is uh, the intersection of this symmetric matrices with uh, Laplacian cone. So, so, so what we want to do is uh, to check condition star and the, and the, it is like this. The gram matrix of P is a locally generic point in some extremal point of Ln plus gamma. And uh, to prove this statement, uh, we, we use block diagonalization. I think this is a interesting point. Um, Brock diagonalization is uh, like uh, it was used to employ symmetry for designing faster algorithm. And uh, recently, actually, the combination with the facial reduction appears. But we use it to analyze the facial structure of a symmetric Laplacian PSD cone because in order to prove this. This this statement we uh, at at, le at least we have to understand the facial structure of this. Okay. And uh, so 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 this is a symmetric Laplacians, and uh, what we do is to block diagonalize. Let gamma tilde be the equivalent class of real irreducible representations, then the, the, then the transformation uh, can be written like this. So we, which looks ugly and complicated, but uh, the important point is uh, um, um, it is just a uh, sum of uh, no very known uh, spaces. Uh, okay, then some complication comes from uh, the fact that some uh, we have to work over real numbers instead of complex numbers, and this comes from that uh, it, not to destroy the uniqueness condition. Using this block diagonalization, uh, we can check star condition. So to make my presentation simple, we further assume that the gamma is absolutely irreducible. Suppose G sigma P is a theta symmetric and uh, let the M low to be the multiplicity of uh, law in the, the point group theta. Then we can check actually check star. 
namely, if P is a generic module symmetry, then ground matrix, the image of ground matrix and psi is a locally generic point in some extreme points of the mapped cone. Okay. And by combining the go to the Sasson lemma plus this lemma, uh, we can get the, our second cell. Okay. Okay. So, so, so this is the final page. Um, what we proved is the uh, necessity of super stability for generic tensegrities and uh, generic tensegrities with uh, symmetry. Um, the corresponding problem for global rigidity remains uh, open. So, but yeah, but I think it's out of uh, the scope of uh, SDP approach, I guess. Yeah. So, so thank you. This is the end of my talk. Thank you, Ryoshin. Um, any questions? Uh, yes. So, yes. Uh, I have a remark. Uh, this is uh, uh, very good. Uh, it's very interesting. Thank uh, you. Uh, uh, excuse me. Uh, Yes. Simon, uh, uh, Simon Guest and I are, have been writing a book for the last uh, over 10 years. And uh, at the end of the book, we have a discussion about uh, uh, super stable and, uh, well, mostly super stable uh, tensegrities with symmetry uh, using uh, uh, group representation theory. Uh, mostly for finite groups uh, in dimension three. I wonder if there's any overlap with what you're, you're doing. The book, uh, I assume, will come out at the end of this year, <laughs> before the end of this year, but it's in, been in the works for many years. Also, I have some software where if you want to create a uh, framework, a tensegrity, uh, with uh, a fine, it's like uh, the alternating group of five elements, uh, the symmetric group of four elements, uh, you, can, you can create one, it'll give you the, the uh, lengths and so on that, uh, that you need in order to build it, if that's what you're interested in. Um, in fact, I don't know if you see, you can see some of the, uh, let's see, if you can see my video, you can see, uh, for instance, this is an old one like this. I imagine your theory would work for this. Can you see this? I don't. This this um, has. Uh, yes, this, I can see that. Yes, yeah, this is the symmetry of a uh, a cube. Part of the I think this is S four something a symmetric group on four elements, something like that. It has uh, twenty four. Uh, vertices, uh, 24 of these vertices. Yes. And so uh, you can use uh, representation theory to uh, calculate the uh, stress matrix. And uh, that gives you that kind, of, uh, that kind of result. And I imagine it would uh, connect with your thing. There's, there's no discussion of uh, it being generic explicitly but there's a range of parameters that you can choose for these structures, and it's very limited. There's uh, about the, the uh, types of uh, graph that you can choose. And, um, but nevertheless, it gives you things like this. Uh, so um, I would imagine your symmetry, your uh, discussion, your theory would work uh, perfectly perfectly reasonably well. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I actually read uh, the paper with you, uh, by you and uh, Terrell. 
1995. And uh, what, what paper was this? This paper about uh, the... Oh, with Maria Terra. Yeah, that's one of the very early papers. Uh, yes, that has to do with the... Uh, that, that isn't this thing that I'm talking about with representation, with that kind of representation theory. Yes, sir. Things like, I have some models like that. Uh, this isn't quite it, but this is, this is an, I don't know if you could see it. It, it, some, it has this kind of symmetry. I'm playing games here. You can sort of destroy some of the symmetry by uh, putting a, a different thing at one end, but it looks, the, the things that Marie and I did are, are something like this, right? Right. It was a very that's a very early paper. Uh, I'm surprised. I we actually did the work well before that. Um, yes. So that's that's another. Uh, that's essentially the dihedral group. And the point one point about this is that all the vertices are equivalent under the symmetry. That simplifies the things quite a bit. Uh, I think in principle, with many of these things, you could just do the calculation and compute the stress matrix and compute the rank. Yeah, yeah that's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Definiteness. And, and with modern computers today, it's not a problem, but it does simplify things quite a bit to use the symmetry for, for what it's worth. Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Walk. Walk. Yes. Yes. Uh, so some people sometimes talk about your book with Simon, but I have never found. So it will come soon. Uh, it will come. Uh, if, if, uh, we can send you a copy. It's been around for a long time. I also have software where you can. Uh, design your own, uh, some of these things with the, uh, the, the big finite groups, not the dihedral group, but uh, we, you can, uh, you, you can uh, decide on the ratio between, there's, there's a one degree of freedom in these structures and you could decide on the ratio between the lengths of, uh, let's say the cables and, uh, and then uh, it'll show you a picture and it'll tell you exactly what the lengths are. And so it can help you, uh, you know, does, it do, doesn't help you make it. You still have to make it. Some of them are quite hard to make physically, but, yeah, but you can do that. Okay, so I, I, I'll send you an email later. Yes, yes, please do. We'll send you a copy free of charge. <laughs> Good. Thanks. Any further questions? Why is my camera off? Yes, this is a very powerful talk. I'm very impressed. Thank you. <laughs>